Pokimane, or that name I'm not even going to try to pronounce, is the sixth most popular Twitch streamer in the world. She also can't take criticism. But first, an introduction. Pokimane, or well, that name again, is a 24-year-old Moroccan-Canadian Twitch personality. She started to really hit her stride in popularity in 2017, at which time she dropped out of her university to pursue Twitch streaming full-time, and has been doing it ever since. She currently is clocking in at an astonishing 5 million followers on Twitch, and has gotten more than 70,000 viewers at one time. And on the surface, it's not hard to see why. She's charming and interesting to watch in front of a camera, she's attractive, and to my knowledge, she's pretty good at the game she plays. Apart from playing video games, she also spends time on her channel reacting to content from across the web, giving her thoughts on a number of different subjects, including Twitch drama and internet trends. Pokey is generally more respected than a lot of other female Twitch streamers because she, unlike Alinity, doesn't flaunt her body as much or try to pose in an intentionally provocative way. In short, People watch Alinity to rub a quick one out, and while some people still do watch Pokey to rub a quick one out, the people who are rubbing a quick one out are doing it to a girl casually sitting in her chair playing video games as opposed to a girl bending over and shaking their behind at the camera. Everything needed for the popular Twitch streamer formula is here with Pokey, including an extremely vindictive personality and hatred for anyone who says something remotely negative about her. Let's talk about it. Bo Blacks is a YouTuber who I'm sure you've heard of a lot recently if you spend any time watching YouTube drama-related videos. For the most part, what he does is put together large summaries of feuds between different internet personalities into these very large and convenient videos that give you a pretty good summary of everything that happened. Over a year ago, Keemstar and Pokimane had a bit of a spat where they were arguing back and forth on Twitter in typical selfie video fashion. And I'm sorry, but I think I'm being very legitimate by not encouraging your kind of behavior, because imagine all content creators just ran around picking on and attacking other people's fans. Like, I understand that we can put up with a lot of shit, but most people don't know how to deal with that kind of thing, and you never really know what someone's going through or what they might do as a result of that. So, again, Keem, do better. Have a good day. Bobux created a compilation video of these tweets and videos in his typical style, and it accumulated a pretty sizable amount of views, certainly above average for what his typical viewership was at the time. Pokey, having seen this video, decided to use YouTube's copyright system to take the video down, giving Bobux a strike on his channel. And I had spoken to my MCN and I was like, is this something that I can take down? Because like, I was getting a, like, a lot of annoying, uh, shit from it at the time mm -hmm. and i mean understandably so it was something that we put out on the internet so i get that mm. but i was like maybe if we like kill this because keem had deleted his tweets already and i was like i just want this whole the drama to be up. over yeah, yeah yeah um and i made not the right call uh in hindsight mm. to have that video removed because i was also told it was within my rights to do so mm -hmm. Um, because it wasn't like transformative just, per se. Yeah, yeah, I mean now you yeah, just yeah. see it's just a bad look, it's just uh, the normies that are yeah, just watching it. Ex it's exactly. Like, oh, she wants to hide this because she knows she's wrong. Mm. Yeah, but it was more so like I just didn't want to be in like all this drama, yeah, and I wanted, wanted it to like pass. An extremely similar incident would happen again when a YouTuber by the name of Davsev posted videos that were your typical thick Twitch streamer compilations, where he had videos of Pokemon and images of her in the thumbnail. Pokey managed to get Dav on a stream with her where she would threaten to take his video down simply because he was clickbaiting her. <laughs> this is not my butt. Hashtag not my butt. Hashtag not my president. Hashtag not my butt. I literally type like Pokemon is and this was the first picture. You're what's wrong in this world. <laughs> You're everything that's wrong in this world. A liar looks up my butt. Lies about gifting subs. Why would you title this video Pokemon twerk live on stream? Just tell me. It wasn't actually me, it was my friend. Which one? Oh yeah, yo, this was the easiest clickbait, bro. Hey, how oh. does it feel to know that I'm gonna take down your video? No! Does it hurt your feelings? No. <laughs> Keep in mind, she had done collaborations with other YouTubers who had also done plenty of clickbait. Not to mention that Pokey spends a lot of time on her stream watching other people's videos. And I would say that her reactions, on average, are barely more transformative than a clip channel. Super slow mo. Then let's go. 
There are plenty of streams where she is simply eating lunch or staring wide-eyed at the screen while TikTok compilations play in full, but it doesn't seem to bother her unless the compilations are of her, in which case she can't directly benefit from them and has to use her position as a popular streamer with connections to take them down. When you're a school shooter and you plan to shoot up the school, but then you realize you're homeschooled. All of these clips put together made her look pretty hypocritical and like she was only using these points against Davsev because they were convenient for her at the time, not because she actually stood behind any of what she was saying. It certainly didn't help that she went on to mock him on stream and encourage her viewers to report his content and have it taken down. Anyways. I'll be taking down some of your videos. Wasn't a good look at all, and a lot of people felt that way. All of this came to a head with a video released by YouTube commentator Fainted, someone who had a very small channel at the time of the release of his video, but would pretty quickly blow up because of it, titled The Dark Side of Pokimane. She essentially collabed with a YouTuber who goes by the name of Shotgun Plays, but realistically he should be called I sound like I'm eating a chicken legend every time I And the reason this is a problem is because by playing with this dude, she essentially was supporting his content, and 90% of the stuff that he uploads is straight up misleading clickbait, so... I don't really know what Pokey's doing playing with this dude, honestly. This video accumulated millions of views for him, it garnered him hundreds of thousands of subscribers, and became so prevalent in internet discourse that even PewDiePie talked about it on his channel, painting her as a copyright abuser who was using her position very irresponsibly. Veronica Wang! Pokemane, Alinity, and Ray William Gunson. What do all these people have in common? They're copy strikers. That's right. All these people have history of copy striking videos. Pokemane basically had to respond. And she did respond. Although I was legally within my right to take down the video, morally and as a content creator, it wasn't something that I should have done because I mean, at the end of the day, those were tweets that me and Keem made publicly and videos that we made publicly. She actually owned up to taking down the video and to an extent gave a relatively mature response. There were parts of it that were less than stellar. Most people didn't agree with her interpretation of what is and isn't transformative content, being what falls under United States copyright law on fair use. And while I respect that she stood her ground on some of the points that she made, I disagree with her assessment of visiting the Instagram page of Davsev just to make fun of him. Let me show you what it actually looked like and then you can probably guess why Pokemon didn't include that in her video. Pokey finds Davsev's personal Instagram page and literally starts looking through it and laughing at it in front of thousands of viewers. That is being mean to me. What? Ooh. Some people. They found my Instagram. Yeah, I found your Instagram to too. Ah! Ah! That's me. Why are you wearing your shorts like that? Why are you opening your pictures? Do you feel bad that I'm like- So, um, yeah, that was kind of manipulative, I'm not gonna lie. I don't particularly care if Pokey wants to make fun of this guy, and I don't think that the audience should either. If she wants to make fun of someone for how they look, then by all means, go ahead. But don't be surprised when others do it to you and your fans, and don't back down from what you did when you're called out for it. You made fun of someone, just admit it and move on. People would be much less mad with that than you pretending as if it wasn't what happened. You clicked on his Instagram link, you scrolled through it, you made puke noises at his appearance, it, it checks every box, just own it. Clearly giving off some great vibes towards this guy and encouraging her fans to send him lots of positive comments, right? Bo Blacks later managed to get Pokimane and Fainted together in an interview style discussion, with Bo Blacks as the mediator. They seemed to hash out a lot of what happened and this video was sort of the resolution to this portion of the drama. Everyone learned a thing or two, Pokey explained how she felt, Fainted said how he felt and gave her some criticisms. It was good to see some one-to-one -one human interaction between these two people who had been going at each other in videos and on Twitter endlessly. Even if not everyone agreed with Pokimane and what she had to say, they were willing to respect the response and move on from the situation. Until it happened again. It's a Gundam is a relatively popular commentary channel here on YouTube with nearly half a million subscribers. He makes videos about eccentric people, Twitch personalities, YouTubers. He pretty much checks every box for a successful channel that garners an audience simply by sharing his opinion on different topics. He's entertaining, his videos are interesting to watch, it's good stuff. On May 13th, 2020, Gundam posted a video on his channel titled, Simp willingly goes homeless for Pokimane, where he talks about some of the most pathetic donors to Pokimane, with one man in particular claiming that he actually gave her so much money that he was hundreds of dollars in debt and went homeless. Oh man. So literally, the guy was already behind in his rent and went homeless to give Pokimane money. 
It was a pretty harmless and inoffensive video as far as commentary videos go. There definitely were some demeaning elements to it, but it seems to be mostly done in good fun. Pokemane's like pay pigs are honestly the most devoted of all pay pigs. I used to think DSP's pay pigs were devoted, but I don't think any of them would go homeless to save Darkseid Phil. Pokimane would later react to this video on her stream, where she had a pretty negative opinion of Gundam's content. She seemed to disagree with a decent portion of what Gundam had to say, and claimed that the post of the man who supposedly went homeless due to donating to her was actually fake, meaning that Gundam would be spreading misinformation if he took it as fact. And that was all well and good, until she decided to target his sponsors. Anyone would sponsor these shenanigans. Like, what? And I will say, for this company to sponsor a video that's literally 20 minutes of talking shit about me, you will never see. Dude, your website's so ass it won't even load. But if you ever reach out to me, if I ever see you in my inbox, on site. This clip angered quite a few people, because while it's fine to disagree with someone's take, the general consensus on the internet is that going after their means of making a living is an extremely low blow. Now, some may say that Pokey didn't target his sponsors and was simply questioning whether or not companies should be putting their ads on commentary channels. I would absolutely disagree with that. The way that Pokey talked about his sponsor on her platform was extremely irresponsible, and it's clear to me that she was trying to get his sponsor taken away, especially with the way that she was critical of the company for putting an ad on his video. Not to mention that after the fact, she defended defended her stance on sponsors. However, I also think that content that spreads lies, misinformation, and insults people based on their looks shouldn't be sponsored. Just a month ago, Ethan Klein was torn apart by the YouTube community for going after Keemstar's sponsor. It's a very slippery slope that is being created by these large e-celebrities using their platforms to go after the financial means of people that they don't like. N like, no company should do that just about ever. And many may say that people should just start a Patreon and not rely on sponsors. I would say that's a smart move, but Patreon has also been known to take controversial figures off of their platform. How hard would it be for someone like Pokimane to contact Patreon or simply publicly send her fans after them, demanding that the page of someone who is critical of her gets taken down? The answer is not very hard at all. But just because it's easy doesn't make it any less disgusting. Much like Pokimane's mentality. Oh, uh, is this a video where... Some random dude behind a VR machine calls a girl a thought for 20 minutes? Really want to put my logo on that one! Ha ha ha! I'm sure she would be upset with people if they went after her sponsors because she silences criticism about her, or because she openly mocked a man for his appearance on a live stream. But no one wants that to happen. I don't want it to happen. But Pokimane did not like this video at all. She reacted to this on her stream and she was so upset over this video that she decided to go after Gundam's sponsors here on her stream. Additionally, this was a side of Pokimane that not many had seen, where she acted very defensive and angry towards someone who made a pretty tame commentary video about her. There's nothing wrong with disagreeing with criticism of course, and there's nothing wrong with firing back at mean criticism with, well, mean criticism. But the way that she went about it made her seem very egotistical, entitled, and petty. It's a Gundam posted his own response to Pokey titled, Pokimane is the Carol Baskin to my Joe Exotic, where he claimed that he had actually lost a sponsor with a large gaming company due to this situation. And the sad thing is, I didn't walk away from this unscathed. I had a sponsorship kind of lined up with like a big video game company. Let's just say they're big enough that E3, they had their own press conference and special presentations. Yeah, that kind of went. So I hope you're happy, folks. Commentators like Diesel Patches also made videos about this, calling out Pokey for her behavior and saying that she had a vengeful mindset. Pookie menstrual cramps and I think it was very funny. You might think that this is kind of understandable because you might also believe that she was trying to defend one of her fans. If that were the case, I would have given her some slack, but that's not what this is about. In her response video towards this video, she wasn't trying to defend the fans, she was trying to defend herself. Why? I have no fucking idea, the video wasn't even about her, it was about her stupid ass fan. Which I know Poppycock has a problem with when people attack her fans, or anyone's fans, but I mean, come on, who goes homeless for a Twitch thought? This actually ended up backfiring on Pokey, and she turned a good amount of the community against her entirely. And unfortunately for her, this doesn't seem to be some case of cancel culture or her just being taken out of context. It's simply a lot of people not liking her behavior, and maybe justifiably so. Throughout the situation, a lot of people seem to feel that Pokey never actually learned from what she 
had done and was just using her platform to, once again, silence her critics and go after them. I am honestly inclined to agree, especially when you take a look at her responses after the fact. Hello everybody, I want to come on Turkey Tom's video real quick to kind of give some insight on how Pokimane acts privately and how her behavior privately manifests into public drama such as the It's a Gundam situation, my situation, and a situation I'm going to talk about in regards to her and another Twitch streamer called 39 Daff. Now what I'm talking about here is the extreme disconnect between how she presents herself privately versus publicly. As many of you guys know, a big part of Pokimane's brand is over positivity. Everything is good vibes, everything is positive and nice and if there's even a hint of negativity in the air we gotta crush it down and bring justice to those who are being bullied it's what she did against it's a gundam when he made fun of her simps and it's what she did against team star when he made fun of sniper wolf simps and i covered it on my channel and then she false copyright striked it to admittedly sweep any negativity surrounding the situation under the rug but i was like maybe if we like kill this because keem had deleted his tweets already and I was like, I just want this whole Let's drama to be up. over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I made not the right call, uh, in hindsight, no. to have that video removed. And this extreme desire to eliminate any negativity, as well as her own overall self-centered mindset, is what results in these situations where you see her ego coming out, where you see her treating people like shit, never giving anyone the benefit of the doubt, always assuming the worst intentions of people, and just in general being very antagonistic and defensive against anyone she thinks dislikes her. And it creates a scenario that unless you borderline simp for her, she's going to dislike you and think you are an immoral piece of shit. Just look at the It's a Gundam situation. He didn't even necessarily say anything directly negative about Pokimane herself. In his videos, he states multiple times that he actually has nothing against Pokimane outside of what she did to him and was just critical of her simps. Yet she still had an extremely visceral reaction to it to the point of describing it as content that spreads lies, misinformation, and insults people based on their looks. Pretty extreme words for what that video actually was. Let's take a look at her response to this tweet to Kavos. Kavos is someone who's always been pretty charitable to Pokimane. Back in late 2018, he even directly invited her onto his channel in order to explain her drama with Davsev. So I decided I'll hit up Pokimane and just ask her for her side of the story. And here is what she had to say. I'm happy to elaborate on my side of the story. And I never take down critiques or place false copy strikes on transformative content as you can see by memeology videos still being up, obviously. I then, I then basically said, so you take down videos that are misleading, clickbait, and then inappropriate and paint you in a bad light. She replied with, yeah, I let people use my clips if it's not inappropriate or misleading, slash a lie. So everything Pokemon is saying right there is absolutely fine. I think she's well within her rights. If someone's re-uploading her content onto their channel getting views, if you want to copyright it, if you want to get monetization off it, that is fine. And during this time in private conversations with me, she's always cited Kavos as one of the good drama channels. Yet Kavos makes a simple tweet saying, Pokemon's old Pornhub tab popped up in her stream, and this has caused her to say it's pretty fucking lame that you would blatantly lie like this, and then proceed to block him on both of her Twitters. Now let's take a look at someone who isn't a drama channel. Someone who is another female streamer just like herself. 39 Daff. Back in November 2019, she decided to simply simply unfollow Pokimane on Twitter because she already had her muted and wasn't interested in seeing Pokimane's tweets. But this unfollow happened to occur around the same time where she had some drama for unfollowing another streamer on Twitch after she didn't want to see his content anymore and assumed that Daff unfollowed her to give her a taste of her own medicine during that situation and proceeded to act extremely passive aggressive to her in DMs as a result of that. I just thought it was crazy that she has her head so far up her own ass that she thinks I unfollowed her because she unfollowed slicker which slicker talked about on his stream but in reality i unfollowed her months ago because i don't watch her stuff i may have wrongfully assumed her response was in direct connection to what i had told slicker privately on why i unfollowed him so let me explain basically the day before this i spoke with slicker and i said i only unfollowed you on twitch because i don't watch your content and I know that her and Slicker are friends, so I figured perhaps they had talked about the situation. And so she was doing to me exactly what I said to Slicker. 
I've even had similar situations to this in my DMs with her, where I give her advice on how to handle a particular drama, but instead of taking that advice, she completely dismisses it, acts extremely defensive, and then calls me out for making a similar critique publicly, accusing me for being disingenuous and two-faced. An accusation she gives to quite a few people, as she also called Daft disingenuous for simply unfollowing her on Twitter. <clears throat> Moving on, um, I also feel like ultimately she was dishonest with me, and the reason I believe that is because of the comment she left on Reddit. And I mean, it's a lot to read, so I'll just pull up the part I'm referring to, which is just that she said, I gave into pettiness because I don't like what she said to me and done to my friends and that everyone has to be so hush hush. What I'm trying to get at here is that if you do anything that Pokemon can perceive as something negative against her, which turns out to be a lot of things, I feel like no matter what I say to her, even if it's positive, there's a 50-50 chance she will perceive it as a negative slight against her. She will completely go ballistic, accuse you of all different sorts of things, and indirectly paint you as a villain whenever she goes to talk on podcasts like Healthy Game or GG or Misfits in order to paint herself as the victim. In reality, Pokimane is actually treated a lot nicer than most content creators in her position and of her size. The only difference between her and those other people is that she misinterprets multiple interactions of being directly negative against her when that's just simply not the case. And what's even more infuriating about this is that ultimately, I think it's a projection of herself. A lot of the time she acts nice to you behind the scenes with smiley faces and stuff like that, promising certain things for compensation for the damage she either accidentally or purposely caused you, but in reality she really doesn't give a fuck and was just doing that to crush any negativity surrounding her name. She's completely out for herself and will demonize anyone who doesn't simp for her. To the point of calling drama channels less courteous than her. She literally thinks that she treats people nicer than most drama channels. How she can say that after directly going after Gundam sponsors is just mind blowing to me and completely infuriating knowing what I know. Anyways, that's enough from me. I'll give it back to Turkey Tom. Do I care if she's mad? Not really. Uh, you know, I wouldn't even be like, to be honest, I could I could see us being friends in like in 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 some time if she becomes a likable person. Whoa, shit. Easily one of the most annoying things that an internet personality can do when they get into a controversy is blame other people for criticizing them for the thing that they did. This is called playing the victim, and it's also something that Pokimane does from time to time. Was this one, like, for example, this one video that went kind of viral where someone was like, uh, talking about like the dark side of Pokimane and saying, oh, she's actually a really bad person because of like this and that. And they took a lot of um, clips from my stream and it's amazing what like ominous music and someone delivering lines very well will say prior to very specific cut up clips with no context. Not to say that I am perfect or I go about things in a perfect way, but it definitely made me look very bad. And also um, just like uh, that in combination with scandals about things that are like n not in my opinion like super super important <clears throat> so things like that will occur and then that will make me feel like oh every little thing that i say can be like used against me or clipped out of context or whatever it is and like I am not worthy of any sort of benefit of the doubt. Perhaps the most annoying thing about this stream clip is that Pokey doesn't represent what Fainted said in the video at all. I can't say for sure whether this was intentional or not, but Fainted didn't call Pokemon a bad person or a terrible person once in his video. He criticized her, yes, but in one of the videos about Pokey, he even specifically said that he doesn't want to send hate to her. But honestly, the video can't be that bad because I did check the audience retention and it's very good, so hopefully you guys did enjoy that. Oh, and also guys, I don't want you to think, I've just got this crazy grudge against every single person 
person I make a video on. I'm just honestly here to give across my criticisms and hope that the YouTuber can take them on board in a positive manner. I'm just making videos on YouTube, pal. Like, it's not that deep, honestly, mate. The video itself was pretty fair, and I don't see any real problems with the content in it. None of it was taken out of context. But she then goes on to explain that the video being deleted will not undo the harassment that she received. And that's somewhat fair. YouTube commentary videos do cause harassment even when they are explicitly created with the intent of not sending anyone to harass the target in question. There's a disclaimer at the beginning of my videos, by the way. Please don't send hate to anyone, but even if I say that, people are going to do it anyway. I can't control everyone. But I also feel like she's being a bit hypocritical here. If Foki was absolutely a saint, then I wouldn't care about this clip and I wouldn't be critical of her for it, but she's not. She's been mean to Dobsev. Her fans have undoubtedly sent hatred towards Gundam. That is part of internet culture. But she then goes on to complain about it and even cry. I'm sorry, Pokey, but in a way, you're reaping what you sow here. If you go after people, if you make fun of them, you will be made fun of. If you take videos down and target their sponsors, you will be made fun of. Your actions have consequences. That's how the internet works. That's how the world works. And in a way, I feel bad for Pokey because I know how she feels. I know how it feels when a mob of internet people come after you, and sometimes you feel like nothing you respond with will be good enough, or like some of the people targeting you are being dishonest. But I also can't help but feel that she should just be able to ignore those people if they bother her that much. Don't take down the videos, don't be mean to them, don't give them ammunition. Just enjoy making millions of dollars a year as a streamer and everything that comes with that. Just looking at some of the DMs that Bobax has posted about this topic, it's clear to me that Pokey takes these things pretty seriously and has a very hard time separating a lighthearted joke from serious criticism. Hopefully some of this changes and Pokemon decides to start taking criticism less personally. I, I, I hope she matures as a person, we all have room to grow. But until then, she will be mocked and have videos made on her just like this one. She'll continue to be criticized endlessly by YouTubers and poked fun at for her foolish behavior. It's clear to me that, for now, to Pokemon, criticism is anything but welcome. Hit me! Thanks so much for watching this video. Videos like this are made possible by viewers like you and by today's sponsor, Raycon. I've had my Raycon earbuds for a few months now, and I use them basically every day. Whether I'm editing videos, talking to my friends on Discord, checking out the latest episode of some of my favorite podcasts, or listening to music, my Raycons work very well, and I'm proud to have my content supported by them. Raycon earbuds start at half the price of any other premium wireless brands that are on the market right now, without compromising in sound quality. I listen to mostly metal and rock, and they don't pull any punches when it comes to the bass department. The ones I use are the Everyday E25s. They're best Best model to date, with 6 hours of continuous playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, and a compact design that gives you a solid noise isolating fit. They also come in an assortment of colors, so you can pick one that's right for you. Be sure to support the channel and pick yourself up your own slick pair of earbuds by using the link in the description below to get 15% off your order of the Raycon E25s today. If your girl shop in sizes that are too small, let her. Girls look better in a real tight sweater. Girls look better in a real tight sweater. Girls look better in a real tight sweater. Girls look